Hey guys, today I want to go over how to make some mandalas that we can use as coloring pages. We're going to post them up uh, if they're done for Fine Arts Week. So just to give, I know you guys did personal mandalas and, de and design basics, but these are going to be more your typical kind of classic mandalas where they're just circles with geometric designs in them, and they're a really good way in Adobe Illustrator to practice using the brush tool, practice using different features. So just, this is a pretty simple one. They actually are pretty easy to make. They're much more simple than the one you did in Design Basics. This is, let's get rid of this one. This is another example and a third example. So what you're going to use for this one is the brush tool, the layers. You're going to use a couple of the ways to manipulate objects by reflecting them, joining paths. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to File, New. You want to make sure it's on inches, and you want to make sure it's 11 inches by 11 inches. And get used to making the title something with your name in it. So your name, Mandala, whatever is good for you, but something with your name in it. Hit Create, and there's a few setup things you're going to do for this. So you'll have a few layers you work on. The first thing you're going to do is go and use your polygon tool to make a multi-sided shape. So we're actually going to make a 12-sided polygon. A lot of you might have noticed that you can't find your shape tools but for some of you, the line tool is by itself in the toolbar. And for other of you, the line tool is mixed in with the other shapes. So mine is mixed in with my other shapes. So if you don't see um, a shape over here, look for the line tool. It's probably mixed in with it. I'm going to go to Polygon tool. And I don't know what's going to open for you. It just, it's just multi-sided. That's all it is. It's how you get your triangles. And then to change the number of sides. Right now, the, the least it can go to is three, obviously. But if you go to your arrow key, you can increase the size. So it's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We're going to do 12 sided for this project. That tends to work really well. And then when you're moving your piece around, it can be first we'll make it larger, we'll hold down shift, we'll make it take up the vast majority of the artboard. And one thing you might notice with Adobe is that unless you click it off of the tool, it'll keep doing whatever you just told you. So it's going to keep making polygon shapes. However, if I do come to the center of the one I just created, I will get back to a tool I can drag it with. And let me just make this a little bit larger by holding down shift, pulling out the sides. Okay. So, and what I also did is I rotated it. It's a little bit easier to, I'm gonna just hit V on my keyboard to use the black arrow. It's a little bit easier to do this project if you have your polygon orientated so that the very top is flat. So if you move this up, you'll see when it gets to 240, it kind of holds it there. That's because this line is now perfectly horizontal. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to use my line tool to kind of divide the shape up into pie pieces. And I'm just going to go from one anchor point, that little um, box is an anchor point to my other anchor points. And this you will delete later, so it does not have to be perfect. If you go past an anchor point and your line segment is a little bit too long, they're just going to be guidelines for where you fill in pieces. So don't worry if they're not perfect. And now that I have it all bisected out or divided, I'm going to select the entire object and these are all made from individual lines so if I grab a line and move it around nothing's joined and I can group them together but even if I group them they won't become objects what I want to do is actually join all of these lines together so if I go to object and I go to path and I go to join see it's a shape expanded so now what I have is a bunch of individual shapes and what I'm going to do
and now it's selected. I'm going to go back to object and go down to path and go to path and divide objects below. And the reason I wanted that was because I wanted to get one individual segment. And now that I have one segment, what I'm going to do is do command copy, new layer, command V to paste it. I'm going to take this original layer, I'm going to lock it, make it invisible, and take this guy, and I'm going to, I don't, I don't want to change the size of it, but you do want to zoom in so you can see it really well. The reason I want to change the size of it is because you'll have to then resize it later to fit back into that original mold, and it's just one extra step. But if I zoom in, I can see just fine. And now the next thing I'm going to do is going to just take my line segment tool. If you don't get these magenta lines, these little smart guides they're called, you want to go up to view and click on smart guides. Mine is checked, but that gives you that little kind of magenta lines and they'll tell you when you're in the middle of something. So see how this is intersect? I'm going to take my line segment tool and just bisect the shape, click V to get off of it, and now I have half of a pie piece. And what I'm going to do here is just make one more new layer, lock this, and I'm just going to take my paintbrush tool and play around with this. I can do my shapes, I can do paintbrush, I'm probably going to do mostly paintbrush, you can also do the pen tool. This is essentially going to make a little design so that you can have a really interesting looking mandala. And I'm going to adjust, you can use the brackets on your keyboard, it's the symbol that's next to the letter P on your keyboard. The left bracket makes things smaller, the right black bracket makes things larger. I'm going to go on the small side for this one. And all I'm going to do is just take a quick second to make a few designs. And I want to fill up just one side of this object, like so. Now what you just probably noticed was that I made like a really scraggly line with my paintbrush and then it kind of perfected it. If you come to your paintbrush tool and double click it, you're going to get these additional options. And mine is almost all the way to smooth. Mine's like one step in. I kind of think that works well for this project. If you have it all the way to accurate, you click OK. Whatever you do, it just kind of stays. But if you go back to the smoother end of the spectrum, again, it'll kind of fix it for you. I'm just going to delete these guys and come back over here and go back to B on my paintbrush. Okay, so this is a good enough example. Just playing around with the pencil, with the brush tool, playing with different sizes, trying different little features. And the whole goal for making this is to make it something that someone will want to color in. So you probably don't want to be too crazy small with the details because this will print at 11 inch by 11 inch. So when you zoom out, if you feel like you can see everything pretty good, that's probably detailed enough to be enjoyable, but not so detailed as kind of headache inducing. And now what we're going to do is we have all of our details done. We want to copy this one half and reflect it. So to do that, we're going to go to our V tool, select over the whole object, and you see so you're not selecting this little template shape because that's a different layer and it's locked, so that's always helpful. You're going to hit Command C, you're going to hit Command, and actually we should object, group it. So now we'll hit Command C again. This whole thing is grouped. We'll click over here, hit Command V, and now you see we have the same thing just twice. To reflect it, we go to Object, go down to Transform, slide over to Reflect, and click there. And you have the option to do it horizontally or vertical. We want to do vertical. Thank you for your attention to this announcement. At the end of okay, guys, so the next thing we're going to do is once we have our pie piece pretty much how we want it, we're going to repeat it. And there's a couple tricks we can do to repeat it to kind of make it go faster. We're going to make our base layer visible. And since we didn't change the size of this, actually what we're also going to do is group this little guy here. Object, group, stay together. Now when you made your personal mandala in Design Basics, um, it was advised that you put everything on, let's unlock this for a quick second and delete. 
you know, just make that invisible. It was advised that every time you do a copy-paste, you put a new layer on so that you don't accidentally delete something. Now, if you can be careful enough, you don't actually have to make a new layer for every copy-paste. If you tend to grab things accidentally, or if you're always wondering why did that move, how did that happen, then maybe go ahead and you know do a paste for different layers. But let me show you a fast way to do this. So we have this whole object. I'm going to use my selection tool. It's all caught. It's all grouped. I'm going to do Command C and do Command V to copy it. And this is just the patient grabbing and rotating of this pie piece to do your best to kind of make it match into that that template. And you can kind of get a sense of if it matches up. That looks pretty fine. I can tweak it a little bit. And I wouldn't worry too much if it goes over. Um, just kind of do your best to line it up. So actually, now that I have three in a row, what I can do is I can take a new selection. I can grab all three. I can do Object, Group, Command C, Command V. Paste those little guys. I also, actually, let's undo that for a second. Okay, let's do this. Let's grab this one. Let's ungroup it because that's what I just did. Let's do object, ungroup. That was an accident. So I'm going to select this one, hold down shift, select here, select. Oops. I think I grabbed something by accident. Let me just try this one more time. I'm going to grab the artwork in this one, click it, hit shift, click a piece here, click a piece here. And now that I have all these three selected with not the background, not anything else, I'm going to go to object, group. Command C, Command V. And now that I have half of one done, I can do the same thing. I can click this, which grabs all three. I can hold down Shift and add these three. And now I can do a new object group. I can do Command C, oops, Command C, Command V. Okay, so I could be more picky about how everything goes, but this is pretty fine. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this middle layer. I don't really need that, so I'm going to unlock it and delete it. And then the background layer, I don't want to see that anymore because you can see like it, it adds all this kind of unnecessary lineage that I don't really need in the design. So I'll delete that one too. And now it's going to save it. And we'll actually print these. And if we haven't yet gone over how to print on the Epson printer, we'll go over that. Um, but these will be printed, and then they can be used for your classmates to kind of color in during Fine Arts Week.